What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story is called, I work your lady, just not there. Not sure if this goes in this particular forum, but here goes. About a year ago, I worked for a grocery chain store that had a pharmacy in good old Texas. Specifically, I was a pharmacy technician. The event in question takes place in December. As most healthcare workers know, December is like one of the busiest months for anything healthcare related. This is due to the fact that most people's original health insurance is ending for that year, change in the weather makes people sick, and sometimes the flu strikes early. On the grocery side of things, it's freaking busy because because everyone is preparing for Christmas, buying food, presents, and etc. So about a week before Christmas, on a Saturday no less, my pharmacy was hit hard. And I mean hard. We had a huge amount of patients lining up at our pharmacy before it even opened, begging us to open early so they could get their meds. The flow of patients continued like that almost all day till we closed at 9pm. A lot of these people were really sick. I honestly thought there was some sort of apocalyptic event because we had so many patients that day. Turns out, most were there because of either the flu or refills. Tamiflu was flying off our shelves. At about 3 o'clock that day, I was manning the register, ringing up orders, and watching the line grow ever larger. As I scanned over the line, I noticed this one woman start to complain loudly and fidget. As she drew near the registers, the complaining seemed to intensify. I I was nervous because, knowing my luck, I would probably have to deal with her. Sure enough, I won that lottery and won a bag full of crazy. The lady was around mid-30s, wearing what seemed to be nice dress clothes, white blouse, black dress, nice earrings, and a lot of makeup. This is the delightful conversation we had. Oh my god, finally! Why are y'all so slow today? I'm sorry for the wait. How can I help you? I'm here to pick up my daughter's birthday cake. It should be ready by now. If it's it's not, I need to speak with the supervisor immediately. I'm sorry ma'am, but this is the pharmacy. We don't really have anything to do with the bakery. If you'd like, I can- Don't work here. Get me my cake. I have been waiting in line for far too long for any crap. I can assure you, ma'am, I do work here, but not in the bakery. Our order systems are different and I won't be able to. That is not my problem. Go and get it now. She's getting agitated. Ma'am, I apologize, but we are really busy with patients today and I cannot step away from my register to check on your cake. If you want, I can call that department and tell them you are on your way and for them to help you as soon as you get there. Do your damn job. I am a customer. You need to listen and do what I say. She's screaming at this point. Uh, again, I apologize, but I work here in the pharmacy and not there in the bakery. I cannot help you aside from calling them. No, 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 no. Screaming and pounding her fist on the counter. At this point, my pharmacist heard the screaming and fist pounding and came to check up on me. Hi, I'm sorry ma'am, but what seems to be the problem? This idiot won't get me my daughter's birthday cake! I explained the situation to my pharmacist. It is important to note that my pharmacist was actually an awesome dude. He was a very chill guy, but when it came to complete ignorance from a customer, sometimes he would lose it. Pharmacist angrily and with a pointed finger, Ma'am, don't call my my tech an idiot. And where do you think you are right now? This is not a bakery. This is a pharmacy. We have actual sick people here who need attention. Get out of line and go there if you want your stupid cake. <laughs> Lady, get the hell out of this line. I need my medicine. He just told you he can't help you. Get the hell out of the way. Don't freaking talk to me like that. You don't even get the frick out of here, you bench. My baby needs his meds. Who the hell are- At this point, many of the customers who actually needed the pharmacy had overheard everything that was going on, and many were pissed at the lady for taking up their time. Four other people made comments and wanted her to leave. Two other customers actually booed at her, <laughs> shocked at what was going on because people were turning on her, and completely red in the face, the outrageous lady leaves in a big huff. My pharmacist and I just smirked at each other. I wanted to give 
give medals out to each and every person who told her something. Moral of the story, just because you work in one department of the store doesn't mean you know everything that's going on with every department, let alone work for every department. As a great woman named Helen once said, that is not my job. This story's called, Karen and her spawn demands I help them because I apparently work at a trampoline park. Backstory. This happened a while ago while I was at a birthday party, age 12. My classmate was celebrating at a trampoline park, and my friends had begun playing hide and seek with me, basically just hiding from me with no apparent reason. I started walking around to look for them, when I got bored of it and went on my phone. There were plenty of other people there. Cue Karen and her demon spawn. I was staring at my phone talking on Discord with some gaming friends, when I suddenly heard a loud AHEM. I look up and the following conversation goes like this. What are you doing? You should be ashamed going on your phone while you're at work. The slushy machine is empty and I need you to refill it. Um, excuse me, but I don't... She interrupts me. I don't care that you're on break. Go refill the slushy machine now or I will get the manager. Mommy, I want the slush. Keep in mind, this dude was about 15 and acting like a baby. I know, Demon Spawn. I'll get you your slush. She now turns to me. So, what are you waiting for? Go get him the slush. I then laugh awkwardly, as I'm not good in social situations. I'm sorry, but I don't work here. You're gonna have to talk to an employee about that. That's bullcrap. You're obviously an employee. You're even wearing the uniform. The uniforms were orange and had the name of the company written in 3D in purple and gray pants. I was wearing black Adidas pants and a black hoodie with a white square on it and inside the arm was a man that looked like he was falling. I do not. The uniforms are obviously orange and not black. You still work here? There's a picture of a man jumping on your shirt. Now go get us a slush, and because of this inconvenience, it should be free. Karen then proceeds to drag me up by my arm, so I end up standing. Now, just so you know, I was not very small then. Not now either. As a 12-year-old, I was about 175 centimeters tall, and I was pretty strong. So as you could probably tell, I was looking down at both of them. As Karen was very small and her son slightly taller than her, I also did not look like I was 12 years old and could easily pass for a 16 year old. She got caught a little bit off guard, but her face quickly turned into the devil. She whispered something to her son and before I could figure out what was going on, both threw themselves onto the ground and started screaming, help, help, this girl just attacked me and my son and stole his phone. I was now cringing extremely because I hate being in the spotlight. So I was blushing hardcore at that point and putting on my hood, and everyone was staring at us. Friend then comes out of her hiding spot and rushes over to us. What are you doing? She's talking to the two idiots, by the way. She then stops and looks at me. Are they having a seizure? My friend and I have a weird type of humor. My friend also knows that I'm not good in situations like this, so she stepped in front of me, even though she was a lot smaller than me. This maniac swung at me and my son and stole his phone! She screamed again. Friend rolled her eyes because she knows that even if I was one of the strongest people at school, I wouldn't have hurt any one. Nice employee then comes over to see what's going on. What's going on here? Are you okay, ma'am? Insert what she has said two times before. Okay, calm down. She looks at me. Is this true, ma'am? No, she came up to me and claimed that I work here. When I told her no, she threw herself on the ground and started screaming. Nice employee, looking a little skeptical because I looked kind of shady. Okay, is that your phone? Yes, it is. I even had my fingerprint saved and I can unlock it by passcode too. That's Bull crap! She saw my son unlock it with the code, stole it, and put her fingerprint in it! Okay, calm down. We can just go through the security cameras and see what happened. Karen goes pale as a ghost. Oh, I'm sure that's fine. We're about to be late for my son's soccer practice. I'll buy him a new phone. She then grabbed her son's wrist and hurried out of there. Nice employee apologized and gave me a free slush. It was filled again when I was about to leave from the party. And friend and I got a good laugh later. <laughs> Um, well, that was crazy. Um, trampoline parks are pretty cool, and you get really tired and, uh, thirsty. I know the one time I went there, I drank, like, three energy drinks in the, in the couple hours I was there. So a slushy would really hit the spot. So can you really blame them for throwing a tantrum like that? 
This story's called, Crazy Teacher Tries to Expel Me. I recently graduated high school, so I obviously still look like a high schooler. I went to visit my old high school as I was picking up my sister who was shadowing there. This was a private, Catholic, all-girls high school with no more than 400 girls. Being as it was a small school and I being a recent graduate, most staff and students knew me. First thing you do to enter the school is you need to get a badge from the front desk. It clearly said alumni. I put it on my shirt, I pull out my phone, and plug my headphones in and head into my old advisor's classroom. It was still early to pick up my sister and I got permission to meet with my old advisor. Since it was a bit of a walk, I was wearing wedges, jeans, and a blouse because I just came from a presentation at my university, I plugged my earbuds in and examined the hallways. All of a sudden, someone rips my earbuds out of my ear. Why are you not in uniform? It is not 150 yet. It was a rule that you couldn't be out of uniform until after 150 if you were a senior, since it was a senior privilege. Also, you know the rules. One earbud. She waves my earbuds in my face. I'm sorry, miss, but I am. She cuts me off. Also ripped jeans and hoop earrings. That is a dress code violation. I try to speak. Come with me to the dean. Everyone was in an assembly in the other building, so no one but some teachers were in the main building. This lady takes me to the dean's office. I knew the dean well. She was my coach's mom and my other coach's wife. Crazy teacher pushes me to the chair outside the office, knocks on the door, tells the dean she has a student who is breaking several handbook rules, the dean says she is finishing up an email and says she will be out in a few. Crazy teacher looks back at me as I again try to explain to her that I am not a student. I point to my now messed up badge. She ignores me and I give up and pull my phone out. I am very annoyed at this point and just wanted to piss her off because I was doing nothing wrong. She sits on the other chair across the hall and sees me take my phone out. The moment she does, she tries to pull it out of my hand and tells me I should not be on my phone during school hours. I go, ma'am, I am not a student here. I go to, insert university here, I am here for my sister. She rolls her eyes. Being accepted into a college does not mean you are there yet. You are still under our rules, she says. After a few minutes, the dean walks out and doesn't see me at first and looks at crazy teacher and goes, who is it? The crazy teacher points at me and the dean follows her finger and sees me giving her the Lord help me because I cannot be held responsible if this lady yells at me again. She asked me to come inside her office without crazy teacher. Ah, OP, great to see ya. How's college? Great, uh, my sister is shadowing today and I got out early so I came down to hopefully say hi to my old teachers. That's good. I saw your sister's name on this this morning. Wonderful girl. At this moment, she calls Crazy Teacher. Crazy Teacher, what was the problem with Miss... My name. She was on her phone and had two earbuds in wandering the halls. Also, she is in several violations of dress code. She needs to be punished. I asked her several times to put her phone away. She also talked back to me and lied about her status here. I sigh. I look at the dean. I laugh. This is no laughing matter. I am so sorry for crazy teacher's behavior. She's new here. This is OP. She's alumni of 2019. Her sister is shadowing today. I cannot punish her for anything. She has her name tag saying she is an alumni visitor. She points to the name tag. Thank you, Dean. Crazy teacher, I am sorry for the confusion. I did not mean to cause trouble. Dean asks crazy teacher to return to work and she'll be talked to later. The Dean asked me if I wanted to report her and I was like, no, nah, thank you. It was a misunderstanding. An unnecessary one, but still a mistake. Dean nods, hugs me, and I was off to see my other teachers. I finished visiting the teachers that were there and walked past the office of Crazy Teacher who sat there and gave me glares. I smiled. I went back to the front desk and waited for my sister. Nothing happened to Crazy Teacher, but I heard she got a good lecture about the way to approach students or visitors. Crazy Teacher needs to take that stick out of her butt. This story is called, I'm on my break, back off. This happened a few years ago, but I still remember it vividly. When I worked at my old job, which was right next to a Walmart, I would take my lunch break there since the Walmart has a subway up front and so I could pick up a few items without needing to make a special trip into the store after my shift was over. One day, I was walking through the store with my phone out. 
Pokemon Go just dropped and I wanted to get some steps in. And a woman, Walmart customer, saw me with my phone and scoffed at me under her breath in a really condescending way. Really? You're on your phone now? Since I didn't work there, I stopped, looked her in the eye, and spoke with a cold, emotionless tone. Yes, I am. I only have 30 minutes to take my break, pick up a few items, and eat my lunch. What I do with my time off is none of your business. The kicker is, at that particular job, I had to wear a blue polo shirt that made me look like a Walmart employee, so I think me talking back to her caught her off guard. She didn't say anything more, and I went and picked up my things, paid for them at the self-checkout, and ordered my lunch where I proceeded to keep playing Pokemon and savoring the look on that woman's face during my remaining 20 or so minutes. And even if I weren't on my break, who cares if I was on my phone? I was aware of my surroundings, moving around at the same pace as everyone else, and I wasn't in anyone's way. No one called a manager, the police weren't involved, and I didn't see that woman a second time. It was just a rare moment where I could tell someone off and not get in trouble for standing up for myself. I would put this in r slash tales from retail, but for whatever reason, every story I want to post there is taken down by the moderators and they won't help me out. You know what, it's nice to have one of these stories that is very obviously free of embellishment, and it's more in line with what we're more likely to encounter. <laughs> However, I'm not shaming those that try to make their stories more exciting. It's for our entertainment. Or for karma, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.